Hello everyone and welcome back to another GIS lecture video. And in this GIS lecture video, I want to talk about what we can do if we've assessed the accuracy and it's not as low as we want it to be. Right, we've gone through the process of finding the control points, we've applied a transformation, we've assessed the accuracy and it just isn't what we want it to be. Right. And if we go back to the example that we were talking about in the accuracy assessment video, right, if we ended up with this, safe to say, we probably would not be very happy. Right. So what can we do, right, knowing that we're not happy? What can we do? What can we do to fix this? Right, that's what we're going to talk about in this video, is sort of the optional step four. Step four, improve accuracy. And this is optional. Right, this is optional. Because if you end up getting results and you're really happy, right, they're exactly what you would expect them to be, they fall within the, the project tolerance limits, you don't have to do anything else. But if you get them back and it just isn't what you want to be, well, what can we do, right? What are some things that we can do to improve the accuracy? Right, well, the biggest one that you can do is to examine your existing control points for errors. Examine your existing control points for errors. It's entirely possible, especially if you're doing a lot of these in one sitting, that you're going to become tired, right? And you can make mistakes. Maybe you misidentified the area in either the unreferenced data or the referenced data. So when you made that control point, you were actually making it wrong, right? Maybe you had an issue where you picked a poor control point, right? Maybe you were in a hurry and so you picked a location that wasn't suitable, right? It was too easy, it was too difficult to be specific, right? A good example of this is sometimes you'll see, you'll see people who will mistakenly decide, oh, I'm going to take, you know, the middle of, of an intersection of a four-lane highway and another four-lane highway, right? It can be very difficult sometimes to pinpoint the exact middle of that highway in both data sets. Or maybe it's easy in one, but hard in the other. And so you've made the job of identifying the control point more difficult, which means you're more likely to make an error. Right. Regardless, a good first step is going to be to just relook through all the control points you made to make sure that you didn't make an error. And if you did make an error, you either fix the error or you remove the control point. If you, if you have it being the middle of an intersection and you're just like, oh, I don't feel confident that I can find this effectively like I thought I could, then you can remove that control point, right? If you did a control point where it was the lower left-hand corner of a parking lot and in one image you accidentally used the lower right-hand corner, then you just move the control point to the lower left, right? You fix the problem or you remove it. That's the first option. Sometimes, and I would argue this was the case or part of the case that we had with the example that we, we went through in, in the um, accuracy assessment video, is that you just need more control points, right? For the transformations we talked about, right? Translation, skewing, scaling, and rotation, you only need a minimum of three for it to be able to accurately parameterize but it can help to have more. So another thing you can do is if, you're, if your existing control points all seem okay, you can add more control points to improve the transformation.
right? And what I want to do is I want to segue this idea because these are the two things you can do. You can examine what you have or you can add more. And what I want to do is I want to segue this idea of adding more control points to finish this video segment on georeferencing by talking about what makes a good control point. Right? So we're going to kind of segue off of this and talk about what makes a good control point. Right, and really there are sort of, I would say there's really three three criteria really. Um, some people say more, but I think as long as you have these three, you're gonna come out pretty good. Right, the first is that it should be easy to see in both images. Right, and this may sound trivial, but you have to think about what are some things that might make this non-trivial, right? One example is if you're doing two different, if you're doing a, a new image, like, like the ortho image that we have, and you're trying to geo-reference, say, a historical air photo that was taken in, you know, the 19, early 1900s, right? Buildings have changed, roads have changed, right? So you can't always rely on everything to be available every time. So you have to be careful that what you're picking is easy to see in both images. Right. Two, that it's stable, right? The control point is stable. Right. And I you know, I, I don't, I don't, again, I don't think this is, this, this should seem, you know, pretty obvious, but just again, think this through. It's possible if you have high enough resolution imagery to see parked cars, for example. But again, right, using a parked car, even though you can see it in both images, right, you could click on the car corner in one image, and then maybe in the next image, the car is moved, right? And so that's not a good control point, even though you're clicking on the same thing, right? You're clicking on the, on the corner of the car in both images the car might have moved. So you want to make sure that whatever you're picking isn't going to move between images. This last one is actually really important. Um, you want to try to pick things that are close to the ground. Right, and the reason why you want to try and pick things that are close to the ground, this is a little bit of a, of a tangent and, and beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. But the problem is that when you have things that are have a lot of elevation, say a tall skyscraper or, or, or you know a multi-story building, especially when you're dealing with imagery, right? This has more more to do with imagery. When you have tall objects, you get this effect called terrain displacement, where the tops of objects and the bottom of objects actually separate in the image um, to the point where it can be very difficult to utilize as control points. And I think this is going to be best, best um, typified through an example. So what I want to do is I want to pull up the ortho image that we've been working with. And I want to zoom out a little bit. And I want to find a building right Here's a good example. Right, you can see if we zoom in on the building. Here's a good example, right? If we zoom in on the building, you'll see that what we have, the top corner of the building is not directly up on top of the bottom corner of the building, right? This is one corner of the building, and the top isn't directly above the bottom, right? This causes problems if we're trying to use building corners as tie points, because do you use the top 
of the roof or do you use the bottom of the wall? So you can see how that 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 discrepancy, right, might cause issues in your georeferencing because one, you have to be consistent, which may be difficult because maybe you forgot which one you used. And two, are you confident that you made the right choice? And so that can be difficult. And so again, generally speaking, you want to try to use things that are lower to the ground because they're not going to have that problem of having that terrain displacement where, where things, things with a vertical nature get distorted. Okay, so again, what can we do to improve our accuracy if we feel like we have to? Well, we can examine our existing control points, make sure we didn't make a mistake, and then we can add more control points with an emphasis of picking things that we can easily see in both images that are stable, so they're not going to change position from one in, from one data set to the next, and that we pick things preferably, especially when we're dealing with imagery that are close to the ground. So hopefully this makes sense, and as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.